It's called the Continental Super Sports, and this is it. The fastest, most outlandish car Bentley has ever made. First of all, it's been lightened. The rear seat has been replaced with air. The sofas up front are now racing buckets, trimmed in the Duke of Westminster's smoking jacket. And there is carbon fibre on the dash, rather than walnut. The result is dramatic because that car weighs just two and a quarter tonnes. About the same as a three-bedroom terraced house. Still, it's not like there isn't enough power to deal with the bulk. It has the same engine as before, a six-litre twin-turbo W12. But now it produces 621 horsepowers. The result is 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. That is 167, 168, and it's still pulling! Flat out, it will do 204 miles an hour. Even if you fill the tank with Jerusalem artichokes. That engine has been designed to run on something called bioethanol, fuel made from plants. And if you use that rather than petrol, the power output remains the same, but you get fewer carbon dioxides coming out of the back. Sounds wonderful, if you believe in this carbon malarkey. But there are a couple of drawbacks. First of all, there are 8,850 petrol stations in Britain, but only 20 of them sell bioethanol. And secondly, when you're running on maize, it's not what you'd call economical. Honestly, it gets through veg faster than Paul McCartney's ex. The Super Sports, then. It's all much as you'd expect. Very fast, very heavy, and at speed, about six miles to the gallon. But don't be fooled by the headlines. This is spooky. I've got an automatic gearbox, an air conditioning, and satellite navigation, and it's very quiet. It's just like a normal Bentley. But look at the way it changes direction. This car is like an elephant with the reflexes of a water boatman. And if you're watching in Poland and you don't know what a water boatman is, it's like an Evo 10, it really is. And if you're watching in Ethiopia and you don't know what an Evo 10 is, what I mean is it does things rather well. No, not well. Why did I say well? Oh, God. Then you have the brakes, which can tear your face off. Ready? Now. To make the Bentley a racetrack screamer, it's been fitted with carbon ceramic discs, new suspension bushes, and different anti-roll bars. Though when I say different, I mean, of course, enormous. They've also reprogrammed the four-wheel drive system so that now most of the power goes to the back. Imagine, then, that if you mash the throttle into the carpet halfway around the corner, it will spin up its rear wheels and hang its tail out like a small dog. Sorry, that was a dreadful simile. Dogs don't have wheels, unless they've been in an accident. 
But here's the extraordinary thing, OK? It doesn't. Coming up to the hammerhead, going the wrong way. Halfway round. Foot hard down. It doesn't. It just grips. Of course, you can make it misbehave if you go way too fast and poke it with a stick. But even if you do that, the computer steps in, sends power to the front wheels, and bang, everything is sorted out. It is uncanny. It is a very impressive car, this. But I don't like it. What they've tried to do here is turn an ocean liner into a speedboat. <laughs> Yes, they have sort of pulled it off, but it still feels very big and very heavy. Oh, dear. So big and so heavy, in fact, that I believe it has just shredded its rear tyres. Oh, 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 dear. I don't think that's legal anymore. Or safe. The upshot, then, is simple. If I wanted to spend £163,000 on a speedboat, I'd buy something that was designed to be a speedboat in the first place. In short, I'd buy an Aston Martin DBS.